When you're choosing a new tool, a new vendor, a new platform in today's world, it's always going to come down to the fine grain details. And the reason why is because there are a lot of vendors out there. There are a lot of tools. For example, let's say we, we take something like monitoring and observability. Well, you have Datadog, you have New Relic, you have App Dynamics, and then you have some open source options. So you have, you know, Grafana, Prometheus, Loki Tempo, then you have Jaeger for tracing. There's a lot of different solutions that kind of do the same thing conceptually, of course. So like purely from an engineering technical perspective, the outcome is more or less the same. So when you're choosing a tool, when you're choosing a vendor, you really want to think about, and this is usually what I do, two to five fine grain details where you're like, okay, I really like this tool because X, Y, and Z. And you don't wanna have a huge list because chances are there's not gonna be a huge list, but you do wanna have, again, two to five things that you're like, okay, this is what I like the most about this. And it could be something as simple as, you like the menu options in this UI versus that UI. You like the way the CLI works in this tool versus that tool. It could be subtle things. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk about some comparisons between M0 and Terraform Cloud. I'm not going to tell you which one's right, which one's wrong. That's not my thing to tell you. You got to really kind of dive in and see which one works best for you. But I'm going to show you a couple of things that I like. Okay, so first things first, I always think about what it's going to look like visually based on who's managing it. I'm more of a in the terminal on the API programmatic type of person, but UIs are really important for particular people and teams, okay? So first things first, if I look at the M0 UI, I can see all of my projects right here. I can see all templates that are available within my projects. I can see registries that are available. Any variables that are in my environment, this is obviously super important. Cloud Compass, which I'll be talking about in another video and dashboards okay so i like that it's a very very clean ui when i go to the terraform cloud ui i can click on one of my organizations here and again clean ui okay so i can see my workspace names in here i can see the terraform registry and any providers usage settings and that's about it so you definitely have a couple more different options in the m0 dashboard but still both are relatively clean okay i can even collapse the menu here right giving me a little bit more landscape and space now the second thing that i want to talk about is the overall deployments okay with terraform cloud i can only utilize terraform which could be an issue for some organizations. Now, some organizations are just Terraform, not moving off of Terraform because they have thousands and thousands of lines of code, and that's totally fine for infrastructure as code. But let's say you want to manage some other stuff. So in M0, for example, I not only have support for Terraform, but I also have support for Pulumi. I have support for CloudFormation, Helm Charts, and of course, with Helm Charts, Kubernetes, okay? So when I go in and when I create a new project, I can give it a name. Once it's created, I can then start to add the resource in here. And in this case, for example, this is a Helm deployment, but maybe you might have an EKS deployment, okay? Or CloudFormation, whatever you're currently working on. And if I click on this, I can see the resources here and I can see what's deployed. Notice how it is in fact deploying to Kubernetes. But again, Terraform Cloud, I can't do that. So if you have other things that you wanna manage outside of Terraform, maybe you're not even you know using another infrastructure as code tool because chances are, again, based on the organization, right? But chances are you're probably using one, but you still wanna maybe manage your containerized workloads, which again, you have with N0. And then last but certainly not least is the pricing model, which I, I found a big difference with. Terraform Cloud is resource-based, okay? So the pricing model is based on what resources are deployed. N0 is a pay-by resource or pay-by deployment rather, okay? Which is, in my opinion, most likely going to be cheaper later on versus paying for resources that are just kind of sitting there and maybe you're not doing deployments on them. 
So when it comes to which one to choose, you want to keep a couple of things in mind. Number one, how comfortable do you feel with the UI? Number two, pricing. That's of course going to always come up with your management and finance teams. And then how many types of resources or objects you want to be able to manage? Is it just Terraform? Do you have other infrastructure as code tools? Do you plan on moving to another infrastructure as code tool? And do you want Kubernetes management?